iGaming is simply real money wagering uh, where customers can go online uh, onto any one of these, these websites once they're launched and gamble. And I think there's a misconception. I think a lot of people are thinking that it's just sports betting. You're going to be able to go online and gamble on slot machines. You're going to be able to gamble on any table game you choose, blackjack, roulette, uh, baccarat, uh, in addition to sports betting. Uh, and another couple of points that I think are, are worth uh, pointing out, there are 28 bricks and mortar casinos across the province of Ontario. Uh, there's over 100 applications for online gaming operators. So once the April 4th launch occurs, you could have uh, north of 100 new casinos operating within the province uh, literally overnight. And, and that's unprecedented in, in any province or, or state anywhere else in, in North America. And, and lastly, um, the bricks and mortar operators, such as ourselves, we pay uh, approximately 55 cents on the dollar in a revenue share with the province uh, that gets distributed to the province as well as the local communities where we operate. Online operators who don't have buildings, who have very few employees, they're going to be paying 20 cents in, in taxes on a dollar. It differs in that OLG is one casino. And as I just mentioned, th they're going to be, it's going to be uh, a very, a, a wide open market. So there could be uh, literally hundreds of new casinos overnight. Uh, there are gray operators who are operating illegally, operating from offshore, they're operating in Ontario. So we have one legal operation and then other illegal operations. The reason it's difficult to measure right now, because over the last number of years, as everybody is <laughs> intimately aware, COVID has just wreaked havoc across a, a variety of businesses, most notably um, the casino industry. We've been open and closed a number of times. We've been forced to operate with uh, you know, different types of restrictions at different points. So there's a lot of noise in the numbers over the last a uh, couple of years. So it's hard to say, well, this impact is a result of COVID or this impact is a result of online operators. So um, th there's, there's no way to know specifically. I, I think there's a number of ways that it could impact the areas that we operate. First and foremost, uh, most importantly, are our jobs. Uh, HLT, an independent advisory group, did a study of the potential impact and estimated somewhere between 2,500 and 3,000 jobs could be impacted across the entire uh, province in the uh, Durham Grand River region, uh, where we operate a number of properties, it's it's probably almost about half of that. So it, it could be uh, over a thousand, potentially up to up to fifteen hundred jobs. So it's significant in that regard. The local communities who share in the in the revenue uh, and the taxes that we pay, uh, it puts at risk uh, north of seventy five million dollars worth of, of tax receipts uh, to those local communities, um, and. and the number of other small businesses that we use as vendors for supplies and food and beverage and other things that we uh, that we source, they certainly would be impacted if there's a turn down in our business. And the future potential investments in in upgrading these facilities or adding to these facilities. Here's three quick facts that I'll leave you with that are un you, you can't argue with them. Ontario gets more tax revenue from its 28 bricks and mortar casino operators than any state or province or jurisdiction in North America. So they have more at risk, more than the state of Nevada, more than New Jersey, more than Pennsylvania, more than anywhere. Point number two, no state or province that has bricks and mortar casinos has opened up a completely open market where there can be an unlimited number of operators. So the province that has the most to lose is doing the most dramatic. And then lastly, nobody has introduced a tax uh, model where it's upside down, where the the businesses that don't have facilities, that don't have as many employees, uh, they get a huge tax break, while the people that are operating and paying employees that work and live in these local communities uh, are paying almost three times as much.